and gentlemen, welcome back to Star Citizen. As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me for this week's Star Citizen video. Now guys, this is my first official video that I'm recording for my new channel. Now you guys might be wondering, what are you talking about? There's already a whole load of videos, Star Citizen videos on this channel. Yeah, those are my older videos from my previous channel. The channel which I still have, but I've moved those videos from that channel to this new one. So this is the Spectre of Virgil. I'm Spectre. Thank you so much uh, for watching, guys. So this is my first video on this new channel. And here we are on the 315 PTU. So we are on the test server. And in today's video, guys, we have something special for you. This is the Origin 400i. Yes, the Origin 400i is finally here. This is my Origin 400i, so I have bought the ship. The ship is mine. Now, in today's video, I will go through some of the ship's stats. I will give you my opinions on the ship. I will kind of uh, try to inform you if you want to buy the ship. It's still on sale. Uh, so I'll go through who the ship is for, what the ship could do possibly, but this is not a ship review. I cannot review a ship that I haven't, or any anything else for that matter, that I haven't used for an extended period of time. Like if, you, if I haven't flown a ship within this game for at least six months, I cannot honestly do a ship review. How can I review something that I don't know how it is in various different situations so today's video is not a review but it's just my initial preliminary thoughts on the origin 400i so just a quick word about the channel the specter of virgil uh, channel uh, is going to be exclusively star citizen only so i'm only going to upload star citizen videos to this channel nothing but Star Citizen videos. Now, I still haven't announced this new channel on my older channel. Uh, I will do that, and I think we're going to get a few more subscribers, a few more viewers from there as well. So, getting into today's video, the 400i. So, the 400i is the latest ship from Origin Jumpworks, and the ships, just to give you some stats of the ship, the ship is 60 meters long, so from front to back, it is 32 meters wide from wingtip to wingtip, and it is 12.5 meters tall from the bottom to the top. Now, this ship, the reason why I bought this ship, guys, is because this thing looks amazing. Yes, I purely and simply bought this ship because of the looks. I know this is a this is pretty it's a pretty dumb thing to do. Uh, it's a pretty um, <sighs> amateurish thing to do to buy a ship for its looks but i bought the ship because of its of its looks it looks absolutely gorgeous in my opinion and in fact i'm going to go ahead and say this this is the best looking ship in this game by far so far hands down the best looking ship now if you're wondering the paint scheme so the color the the, the skin that you're seeing on this ship isn't uh, the normal average skin that comes with the ship this is an exclusive ship uh, skin for the 400i uh, for the chairman's uh, club members so the normal paint scheme on the origin 400i is the uh, the white one white and blue the one similar to the uh, 890 jump and the 600i so you guys might be wondering what is the 400i well the 400i is supposed to be an exploration ship yes this is an exclusive exploration ship this does not do any kind of vip work but we're going to go ahead and get into that so let's go ahead and open up the ramp and open up something else here <laughs> very nice as I said, this, this, in my opinion, is one of the best ships in this game in terms of aesthetics. Just in terms of aesthetics, in terms of looks, this ship is one of the best. Now, this thing right here isn't how you get into the ship. This is a garage. So this is a platform for the Origin X1 motorcycle or hover bike or whatever it is. It's, it's a tiny motorcycle looking thing, the X1 uh, from origin and this thing is exclusive to the x1 now the developer q a for the 400i was recently released and i've been through the q a 
and they've said that this bay, this this motorcycle bay, is only for the X1. So you won't be able to store any other uh, manufacturer's uh, vehicle hover bike in here. So no dragonflies, nothing like that. Only the X1. So let's go ahead and go up and give you guys a look at the motorcycle garage. How cool is this? <laughs> so I guess if you don't want to take a motorcycle, you could use this as some sort of extra storage. So I'm going to go to go ahead and go to third person to give you guys a perspective of how big this place is. It's 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 okay. We're standing up straight, right? You could put some cargo in here. I reckon you could put some cargo in here. So you guys might be wondering what does this ship compare to and the question to that is being answered in the Q&A and that this ship is designed to compete with their RSI Constellation Aquila and also the Drake Interplanetary Corsair which is, hasn't been released yet but the Aquila has been released and I can do a review on the Aquila or not a review, a, 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 a look around on the Aquila whenever you guys want but this thing is a competitor to the constellation aquila and the drake corsair so this is how you get inside the ship through here there we go so this is the main entrance into the ship we can go ahead and close that ramp very nice this thing the, the actions on the doors the buttons is is new is similar to what the mercury star runner had when it came out like a year ago and it's really really nice it's really nice and crisp and you have a docking collar here so you have a docking collar immediately here now this in my opinion is a decontamination room this is where you would get ready you'd pretty much get ready to equip yourself to either go out or come back into the ship because every time you enter and exit into this area you can decontaminate yourself and your equipment before you head into the main part of the ship. Obviously, this, given the, the fact that this is an exploration ship, you're bound to go into hostile planets that, that, that which may be, you know, either hazardous chemically or biologically, or you know, may contain viruses or bacteria. So yeah, this is a docking color. We'll we'll speak about this. We'll talk about this docking color. There's a little bit more to this docking color, in my opinion, than people have uh, been led to believe. So let's go ahead and open up these cupboards, these storage spaces. So this is a weapons rack. Yes, this is a weapons rack. It can hold six rifles. Let's go ahead and. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Let's go ahead and store my sniper rifle. There you go. So you can see it can store six rifles very neatly let's go ahead and close that and this thing over here is spinning around this ball is the gravity generator so apparently this thing spins and everything works if this thing stops spinning <laughs> everything starts to float in the ship so these three over here are for suits so these are for your exclusive um exploration suits your your hazard suits your you know those those biohazard suits or maybe those special type of heat resistant suits chemical resistant suits so as i said this is acting like a decontamination chamber before you get into the main parts of the ship so anything that you might have brought back with you unintentionally doesn't harm you or the rest of the crew with that being said let's go ahead and get into the main part of the ship so this is the lower deck this is the lower deck of the ship and immediately you guys can see that there are these things to either side of the ship and these are component houses so these are the locations for your various different ship components and check this out this is a giant size 3 shield generator yes this ship this ship has a single size 3 shield generator which is one of the features of this ship because a ship of this size usually has only size 2s. This thing has a size 3, so it's really nicely shielded in that way. So that's the shield generator over here. We have some more component housing and also avionics. Check this out. This is new. Avionics is new. Bearing. Looks like a computer. It looks like some sort of uh, flight computer. And of course, uh, we have three coolers here. 
three size two coolers very very nice this is this is really cool really really cool now over here you've got an elevator that goes up to the top deck the habitational deck and of course if you if the elevator doesn't work or if it if, if for whatever reason you don't want to go through the elevator you can go ahead and climb this ladder but we're not going to do that yet I'm going to go ahead and check out the cargo bay so this is the cargo bay for the 400i so the cargo bay also acts as a uh, place to store some more components so this is the jump drive and of course we have escape pods so speaking of escape pods this thing can have a minimum crew of one so that means all you people out there always asking can i one man this ship yes you can one man this ship pretty much you can buy the ship and just drive it and use it by yourself or you can have a maximum crew of three now in the q a they've said that the ship the ship's life support won't support uh, more people than around three, maybe four, possibly. And that's it. That is it. The life support, meaning the oxygen generator and the CO2 filters. So components here, jump drive, escape pod, escape pod. <laughs> so this is where you would go in and eject from the ship. You have another escape pod here. And of course, more component housing. There we go. Power plant and some more power plant escape pod. This is this is very cleverly done here, guys, because these components can be taken out and just put here. And of course, this platform drops. We'll get to that later, and they can be replaced and accessed quite easily. Now, the that that was one of my main um, critiques of some of the other uh, ships in Star Citizen, where these components, because these will eventually be physicalized, where you would actually be able to grab these, use a tractor beam to pull them out on top of a trolley, and replace them. So things like this won't magically appear and disappear into your ship. You either have to pay somebody physically to come in and install one of these, or you got to do it yourself. Now, also, if this thing catches fire or explodes or leaks, it's not really a problem. This is the cargo bay. This is where you would expect something like this to go wrong. So that way, this, this ship gets a plus, an absolute plus for safety, in my opinion, in that term. So one more escape pod here. And of course, another power plant. So you guys might have noticed one jump drive and three size two power plants, which is pretty cool. Now here is the cargo bay platform. This is a common thing for Origin to do. They designed their ships where the cargo bay platform drops down. So you guys can see the cargo goes here. So you can either put cargo or you could put a, a vehicle so you could either put a rock mining ship at the moment or perhaps perhaps an ursa rover i'm not sure if an ursa rover will fit in here uh, or any other vehicle that pretty much has the same size as this platform maybe a a origin ground vehicle or a a cyclone so this could fit on there or cargo which is not bad and check out how nicely these ramps fit on the ground. This is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. So let's go ahead and go back up. So this is kind of a secondary way to exit the ship as well. Really, really nice. So in terms of cargo, so speaking of cargo, this ship can carry 42 SCU of cargo. That's what, that's what the website says. It can carry 42 SCU cargo. So just doing a quick comparison with the Corsair and the Constellation Aquila. Uh, the Aquila can carry 96 SCU of cargo and the Corsair hasn't been released, but it's advertised as being able to carry 72 SCU of cargo. So both the Corsair and the Aquila can carry more cargo than this thing. I mean, if you look at the Constellation's cargo area, it's a lot bigger than this thing. So, so far, Constellation, Corsair, beat this thing in terms of cargo space. Let's go ahead and open up the door, and let's check out uh, level 2. Let's go up using the elevator. So, this was the technical deck. 
this is the habitational deck. All right, so let's go ahead and start from the back of the ship. So this thing has a cartography table. Now this is uh, what this thing has over the Corsair and the Constellation Aquila. Neither of those two ships have a cartography table. You guys might be wondering, Spectre, what the hell is a cartography table? Well, that's a great question. I have no idea what this thing does because this thing is not functional at the moment. But the Carrick, being the, the ultimate, the best uh, exploration ship has a cartography room so i'm guessing it's a pretty important thing to have as an exploration ship as an explorer so cartography as the name suggests is the process of making maps or mapping something out so this thing will have a great use in the game once it's released once it's actually i should say once it's functional now down here there's a series of things. They look like hard drives or computers. Now, they've said before that the exploration gameplay entails storing, capturing, saving, and transferring data. So, terabytes and terabytes of data is a thing. So, uh, if you want to store the location of a particular planet, a jump point, a nebula, whatever, an asteroid belt, you need to store it on your computer, on your ship. So that will be a thing. And I'm guessing this, these six things, these six boxes are computers or hard drives, hard drives. So the 600i is the next ship above the 400i. And we're not gonna talk about the 600i as, as such in this video because I've got a video on the 600i coming up very shortly. And the 600i is the next ship in terms of price from the 400i and that thing also has a an exploration variant from its base touring variant so we'll get to that in the next video but even that lacks a cartography table like this one how cool is this view oh and by the way i'm in my favorite uh ship review ship showcase uh location on hurston and here's a turret with two size three guns so this thing let's talk about the turrets this this thing can is equipped with two turrets one on the top which is the one that you're looking at here and one on the bottom both are armed with two size three weapons so two size three weapons and of course they're remote they're remotely operating meaning that no no person has to physically get inside the turret climb into the turret they can be controlled via a computer now that's significant why because that means that these turrets in the future can be slaved to a computer blade. Meaning that the computer, the ship itself, will automate these turrets to take out whatever the pilot uh, wants the, these, uh, these turrets to take out. Now the, the, in the Q&A they say that the turrets give some excellent coverage for the ship especially to the rear of the ship obviously this is not a combat ship like you gotta have some common sense like people are are saying on spectrum that this thing lacks firepower so on and so forth this is not a combat ship not every ship has to be armed to the teeth yes having weapons is important but there has to be a trade-off if you want if you think you're gonna fly through a hostile bit of territory how about you hire some mercenaries right so you need to cooperate with other people or get a buddy of yours to come in in a 325a and to guard you but anyways uh we'll get to that later this thing this place as i said origin ships are amazing in terms of their views they've got these panoramic uh glass um bits on the ship that you can see everywhere uh, outside anyway so we have a kitchenette here so you've got a wine cooler this this is a luxury ship this is exploration uh done in luxury so you're exploring stuff while also enjoying the creature comforts of uh, of a five-star hotel <laughs> uh, for a lack of a better term you've got cutting boards you've got some sort of tap sink fridge wine cooler table so this this thing has every sort of luxury just check out the wood the wood flooring i mean this thing says i am expensive that's what this ship says i am i'm i'm, I'm an expensive ship <laughs> so as, as we said this ship can carry 
a crew a maximum crew of three so here is the captain's quarters so this is the captain's quarters. if you buy the ship you'll be spending uh, a lot of your time in uh, this room so you'll be spending a lot of your time in this room either sleeping on the bed or working here on your computer and you've got a nice closet here for your stuff and of course you can change the lighting in the room as well how cool is that I absolutely love this this feature is so good so you can go ahead and lock the door as well you can go ahead and lock the door so the door doesn't open and of course over here immediately to the front of the captain's quarters is the crew quarters so your two crew will be able to sleep here now check this out how cool is that that's some extra personal storage down there underneath the bunks that is so freaking cool and you've got a flat screen tv i'm guessing more storage space and of course uh, a closet space as well for each crew member of course you can go ahead and dim the lights in here too very atmospheric very cool now i've been saying this before but the cig ship pipeline the ship designers the ship creators the concept artists they're getting better they're getting better and better at this they're getting so much better at this this ship is so much better than the 600i i i promise i won't talk about the 600i but this thing is way better than the 600i the way it's designed that's that the way the, the efficiency of its design is so much better than the 600i already so let's go ahead and get in here this is the bathroom this is the bathroom check it out <laughs> so this place is the actual shower so this is the shower this is like a a towel hanger or a closet space of course you've got your sink and of course my character seems to be a vampire because we have no reflection <laughs> yeah pretty cool stuff very nice shampoo <laughs> soap very nice very very cool yeah so this is the habitational deck and of course the most important room guys is the bridge of the ship again if you buy the ship chances are you'll spend a lot of time here on the bridge now before we talk about the various different stations let's just discuss for a second who this ship is for so this ship as i said in the q a they've said that chris roberts wanted this ship to not be one of those pleasure yachts from origin he wanted this ship to have a serious role so this thing is an exploration ship first and foremost so this thing can go out and explore now there are various different types of explorations so you can explore in in on one planet you can explore a system you can explore the next system closer to you or you can explore a system that is probably a hundred jumps from the system that you're based on so this thing isn't a carrick it definitely isn't a carrick but it is an explorer it's an explorer and you can go out and explore in this with two of your buddies or two crews or you can just go ahead and explore by yourself now this ship is also a great personal transport ship now i am not going to use this really for for exploration i'm going to use this ship for personal transport i also own a drake corsair and when that comes out i'm going to give you guys a look at that as well but i i mainly bought this ship as personal transport so this thing is great at running around and doing uh, errands or moving from one place to another this thing is absolutely great for that it's fast it, it's stylish and it looks absolutely amazing from the outside now enough jibber jabbering uh let's go ahead and get inside one of the auxiliary stations so these two stations here control the two turrets the two remote turrets so let's go ahead and turn it turn it on this thing controls the top turret so if you guys remember this is the cartography room just there so this is the top turret you got some really nice coverage 
they really meant what they said in the Q&A. This thing has really awesome coverage from from uh, to protect it behind the ship to, to the bottom and to the top. And that's really what turrets are. They're, they're defensive. They're defensive um, armaments. So let's go ahead and fire. Nice. Pretty cool. Very nice. Let's go ahead and turn it off and exit the seat. Okay, so that's for the top turret. This is for the bottom turret. And I, by the way, I love these panels. They work so well. Power on, enter turret. So this is the bottom turret. So this is this is looking bottom to the front. And we can swing it over to bottom rear, pretty much. It could be a little nauseating <laughs> to try and work this out. But it's safe to say that this ship is really nicely armed in terms of its turrets. And they've got some really awesome coverage. That's loud. There we go. So as I said, given the fact that this thing has remote turrets, means that all of you guys who want to play solo, rejoice. It can be probably, most likely, uh, assigned to a computer blade. And finally, the seat of power, the captain's chair. So if you're going to buy the ship, you will be sitting right here. This is the captain's chair. And I've got to say, guys, this thing has an amazing feeling. It has the same kind of feel that the 890 has. So if you've ever sat inside the captain's chair for the 890 jump, this has the same feeling because obviously you've got a lot of ship in front of you. You can see a lot of your ship right in front of you. Let's go ahead and turn on the engines. And let's go to the external view. As I said, this ship is the best looking ship in Star Citizen so far. This looks so good. Absolutely amazing. And that pointy nose, as you're looking out through the captain's chair, you see a lot of your ship still ahead of you. It gives you that feeling that you're flying a larger ship. You're flying, it makes you feel like you're flying a really large ship, similar to the Caterpillar. But in fact, you're flying a nimble ship. So you guys might be wondering, uh, Spectre, what is the advantages of having this thing over a Corsair or a an Aquila? They've said that this thing is apparently more fuel efficient, so it can go out further. You know, given that we, we're getting the Pyro system soon, this will be very useful in Pyro. And also, this thing is supposed to be faster and more nimble than the Aquila and the Corsair. So take that for what it's worth. So this thing is supposed to be faster, more nimble, but the Aquila and the Corsair have a whole lot of firepower more than this thing, guys. They have a lot more firepower, they probably have more armor, and they have more cargo space than this thing. We still don't know, in terms of avionics or exploration equipment, how they will turn out to be. Like if, if this thing is has better radar or better exploration equipment or vice versa but if you guys just pay attention to that dome just above the cartography room not sure if you guys can see it it's, it has four lights that's a dish that looks like some sort of radar some sort of scanning dish so we still don't know how good this thing is at exploration per se when compared to uh its peers you know, the Corsair or the Aquila. But definitely this thing wins out in looks. <laughs> this is a lot more stylish than the Corsair or the Aquila. So there's one more thing, one more thing that a lot of people have missed about this ship that you can do. So this thing could still be a pleasure yacht. How? You might be wondering how. So if you own an 890 Jump, or if your friend owns an 890 Jump and they're transporting VIPs, right? Well, your friend or yourself in your 890 jump can hire a bunch of people in 400 eyes or own a bunch of 400 eyes and have these people come up, have the 400 eyes come up to the uh, 890 jump duck. Just have a look at that ducking color. 
that docking collar is 100% designed to dock with the 890 jump. So you could dock to the 890 jump, send your, your VIP uh, passengers on a safari, right? In the 400i. So this is still a luxury ship. They could go out on a luxury uh, exploration day. You know what I'm saying? Like in, like, a, like a safari, like a luxury safari for your 890 jump VIP cruise. So this is definitely an option in this ship. If you own an 890 jump, think about having a few of these, like two or three of these. Have your friends come out and take your VIP guests on a safari on a luxury safari just think about that for a second that docking color is perfect for the 890 jump <laughs> just just some of uh, some of the things that i've uh, thought about but yeah ladies and gentlemen uh one more thing that's left that we haven't discussed is firepower so this thing is armed currently with two gimbal size three weapons that the pilot can control and that's it they can be upgraded to two fixed size 4s, and that's about it, really. And also in terms of missiles, let's go ahead and have a look. We go to weapons, we go to missiles, and right there. So we have 16 size 1 IR missiles, and then we have 16 size 2 cross-sectional missiles. So a total of 32 size 1, size 2 missiles. Um, uh, that's a lot of missiles. <laughs> that's a lot of missiles. Uh, it's relatively the same as the Constellation. Constellation can sort of has the same amount. Uh, you can spam a lot of missiles at a smaller target. But 32, 32 size 1 and 2 missiles is nothing to laugh about. This thing is really nicely armed in terms of missiles. I'm not sure where the missiles are carried. But this thing can pack a whole lot of punch with the missiles. And yeah, that's about it. So let's go ahead and take off in this thing. Let's go ahead and take off. Retract the landing gear. Come on. <laughs> there you go. So the landing gear is retracted. This thing looks absolutely gorgeous. I've said this a thousand times, I'm going to say it again. This thing looks absolutely amazing. Amazing. Now, when people buy cars in real life, when you buy a car, people immediately go and look at look at the, the, the car from the outside, right? So you look at the car from the outside and you like the look of the car from the outside. So you like the paint, you like the spoiler, the side skirts, the... The wing, the the headlights, the tail lights. So, all the features that a potential car buyer looks for is on the outside of the car. Isn't that strange? Because the driver or the passengers are going to spend most of their time inside a car. So, why do you care what the ship or or, or a car looks from the outside? <laughs> that's a little that's a little bit funny, isn't it, guys? So. What do you care how it looks from the outside? In this case, we, we've got a we've got a third-person camera that we can enjoy the exterior looks of the ship. But in a car, you really can't see the outside of your car, can you? That's for other people to see. You you're going to spend most of your time inside the car, and it's sort of similar with a, with a, with a ship as well. And in fact, more so because you're going to be living in this ship for extended periods of time. Now, if I, when I, in fact, when I use this ship more, I'm gonna come back and do a second video on it. I'm gonna give you guys uh, my, uh, my, uh, my more. Uh, basically, I'm gonna give you guys a more informed uh, video, more informed opinion on this ship after I use it for a couple of months uh, in the game. But obviously, exploration isn't in the game yet, so. We can't really determine how good this thing is for exploration, but obviously we can determine how good it is for personal transport, uh, for uh, combat maybe, <laughs> maybe, uh, to go ahead and see if we can take out anything with those missiles or those guns. But yeah, but this thing is fast. So I've flown it, this thing can go up to 1,245 
uh, meters per second in space in zero G in atmosphere it's actually pretty pretty fast as well like we're at 7,000 feet and we're doing 500 kilometers an hour which isn't slow for a ship of this size looks so good doesn't it <laughs> Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been it. This has been uh, the 315 PTU. This is the 400i. There's still a lot more to show about the uh, 315 update. I was just hoping that the, the, the PTU would go to the live server and I'd be a little bit more stable before I make videos, but uh, well, we gotta do uh, what we gotta do. <laughs> so there's a whole lot more to see in 315 stay tuned for a lot more videos from uh, the 315 update anyways ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching this video on the 400i i hope you guys enjoyed it until next time please take care and bye bye